Nothing changes instantaneously. In a gradually heating bathtub, you'd be boiled to death before you knew it. Our Father, who art in heaven. Seriously? What the actual fuck? Gilead doesn't care about children. Gilead cares about power. Why does healing have to be the only goal? Why can't we be as furious as we feel? For whatever man sows, so shall he reap. Welcome to Above the Garage. Hi, friends. Today we have Christine Coe, who plays newcomer Lily from the Mayday Camp on the Border, to chat with us. Thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm a huge fan. Honestly, this this helped a lot when I was prepping. So, oh, that's amazing. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, before I forget, my daughter really wanted me to tell you how cool that she thinks that you are. Ah, I was watching your sword you. fighting video on my phone and she came over and she saw it and she was like, she's been mastering the art of knocking shit off shelves with a plastic bat ever since. <laughs> But I love it because I love when she's inspired to learn new things by cool people. Oh, that means so much. I mean, uh, I, I've really been getting into Chinese straight sword training. It's, awesome. it's just something I've always wanted to pick up. And there's a couple times where I've uh, had the opportunity to audition for roles and they've asked me if I could do it. And I'm always like, ah, I, I'm sure I can. And then it wasn't until I started training. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. This is going to take months to figure out. But um, yeah, if your daughter is ever interested, it is a very fun thing to pick up. And um, I'll tell you this, it's, it's, uh, you feel really satisfied when you can finally flip the sword backwards because it looks oh, easy nice. on camera, but um, doesn't look easy to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And don't worry, the swords are not sharp at all. They're like, they, they kind of feel like plastic. So um, oh, yeah. it just looks cool. It makes like a whipping sound, but yeah, <laughs> not dangerous. It looks really cool. Um, <laughs> it's also really, it's all, I admire you too for like going after the job you want instead of waiting for, you know, it to come and then they'll yeah. train you. It's just. Out there yeah, it. that's kind of been my MO for everything I've done. Um, it's It's been like, I put it out there, it's what I want, and then it trickles back. And that's exactly what happened with Handmaids. Because yeah. this, oh my gosh, Lizzie's picture has been on my vision board for, I don't know, 11 years, maybe. Oh, wow. Um, wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So, and, and this wasn't my first time auditioning for the show. So the fact that I even got to be on oh. it was insane um, to me. And yeah. What was the, yeah, what part, yeah, what part did you audition oh, for? Oh man, I, it was a smaller character and I want to say it was also a Martha. Okay. <laughs> I think it's in season, like early seasons too, because I went in person to audition at the casting office. So this mm. was back pre- in the good old days. Back in the good old days, <laughs> pre-pandemic. Where people could hang out. Where people can hang out. And I was so excited uh, to be in that casting office. And they had like a big poster of handmaids. And I just, I just remember shaking. Like I was shaking in that office oh. being like, I don't know if I can deliver these three lines. Um, <laughs> I, I did not get it, <laughs> obviously. But it's better that you did it because Lily Lily has a lot more potential yeah because I got to play Lily um and it was all timing you know I feel like for actors it's this thing where you have this dream and it doesn't go your way but it somehow comes around for some reason and to, to be totally honest I just wasn't ready to be on that show like I just had to train more and go to acting mm-hmm. class more and really understand the tone of the show and mm-hmm. so then years later to be able to come back and and meet Bruce Miller and meet Lizzie it's just it was so exciting for me you know oh, that yeah. that felt like full circle so yeah, yeah. that's yeah. such a cool story I love that what did it feel like when you what when they called you and said hey you've got the part I died I mean I will <laughs> there's a whole story of the audition because um basically like this is during kind of during lockdown when this was all going on so everything was self-tape and uh I got the tape right as I was in the middle of shooting um only murders in the building mm-hmm. and so I was in New York by myself I'm, I'm based in LA and because I was shooting only murders in the building kind of at the height of when 
Omicron was going on. Um, it was like mm -hmm. right after Christmas uh, and everybody wanted to be super safe on that set. And I, I wanted to be really safe. So I didn't have anyone to read the lines with me. Oh. And I was kind of panicking because I was like, this is not really an audition that I can FaceTime and kind right. of ha like, yeah. you know, coast my way through this Lily audition um, because it was so meaty and complex and she was such an important character um, from May Day. And so I was like, guys, I just feel like I need to see someone in person. I feel like I have to do this in LA, but the tape is due on Friday. I, I'm i still in New York <sighs> and I fly that night. I don't know what to do. And so I begged my reps to ask if they could give me one more day. And they were like, yeah, like she can turn it in one day, but she's gonna have to turn it in at 9 a.m. that day. And so I flew <laughs> that night, oh my God. I wrapped on Only Murders. I flew that night and then I called my friend and was like, I'm at going to be at your house at 7 a.m. I need you. <laughs> oh, I need you to wake up. Help me with this. Yeah, to wake up. Help me with this audition because it's like my dream role and we're going to get it done. And we got it done in his kitchen. I We like had to unplug his refrigerator because his refrigerator made noises. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, his name's Ari Frankel. Thank you, Ari. Dedicated friend. Yeah, oh, seriously. Yeah. He was in my acting class and he was like Christine we're gonna get this one like this is <laughs> this is the one like we did the tape together he's like I can feel it and um I love that yeah we did it and we submitted it it was just one audition and then I I got the call that I got it which was mind-blowing I mean it's it's an actor's dream to get this call like this is when you do when you ask for a drama you're like this is the show to be on mm -hmm. you know so exciting when did you get the call then how long do you have to wait um, it, it was a minute. It was like a couple weeks before. Oh, I got the call. come on. They made you turn <laughs> in by 9 a.m. and then they're like, oh, we're going to sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so happy to get it done and do it yes. the way I wanted to do it. Like, right. that was the thing. Like, I definitely could have churned out a quick tape and, and kind of, I just felt like this show deserved so much respect and the tape had to feel like the show and so yeah. for me to kind of wing it um just didn't feel right and yeah. I love that we did it in Ari's kitchen because it kind of like was moody and um mm -hmm. and I was just like so tired from that flight that I had like bags <laughs> under my eyes and I was like this it is worked. perfect like yes. this is like she's gonna feel real and raw and uh <laughs> It's great. The beginning of my audition tape, um, people aren't going to be able to see it because this is a podcast, but I was like at the corner, like down here, sitting like back like this, uh -huh. staring off into the distance. And we were like, that's great. Lily's supposed to look like she's physically and emotionally depleted. Let's just keep it in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it was, it was really cool. Cause those, those scenes made it in the final cut in, um, episode three and border. It was pretty much exactly. What were the lines in the audition tape? Um, the one thing that got me the most was Lily at one point said to, uh, June, um, women always say that when they've done something extraordinary. That line was mm. amazing. It was killer it was verbatim word for word in the script uh already done and and that gave me chills because I was like yeah. I know exactly what she's saying and I know it's exactly true, right? you know yeah. The, yeah. the compliment that she's trying to give June and just like this idea that she's meeting June for the first time you know like she's been a part of May Day for so long and June's like this idol to her that you know mm. she made Angel's flight happen and she's the you know, she was traded um, when they traded for Waterford at the end mm -hmm. of season four. Yeah. And so it's just like, she really does owe her life to June. And the fact that she's talking to her in person and gets to yeah. say thank you. I mean, not many people get that opportunity to like meet the person that saved your life and, right. and be able to thank them and then offer them something and be like, I can help you, you know, yeah. I can help you talk to Nick. So that was that whole scene was pretty much exactly the way the audition was, which is like wow. so satisfying as an actor because you're like, God, the writing is just so good. Like you don't yeah. need, you don't need to do anything. You just say the line. <laughs> and just like, that was my first scene I got to shoot too. Most of the time you shoot out of order and right. it, it kind of, mm -hmm. you have, it jumbles your head and you have yeah. to figure out like the tone. <laughs> Whereas this was like day one, meeting Liz Lizzie, meeting, you know, Samira and 
just being like okay we're doing this together I'm so excited <laughs> and it just was such a good way to start what a cool day one yeah it's a really really cool incredible day one. yeah I want to start a petition to get the audition tapes on like a special feature too that, <laughs> I love watching audition tapes I will say me that. too I, I would too. love that right yeah. like uh like you see it and then you see the scene it's like the progression the progression of it and you see how they light it and the shots that they choose and yeah. especially like like I said when you get to see how close it is to the audition you realize like wow the the people behind the scenes are so talented like they've set it up perfectly for you that you kind of just like place the people there and then the actors bring it to life and you're just like wow I see this world and it's you know my first time being on the show just the whole experience of the way that they shoot it, they have the camera really close to the actor. So there's these like great close-ups. Yeah. <laughs> like you always see Lizzie with these like amazing close-ups, yes. right? And I think I've never experienced that as an actor. Um, and when they do that, you don't, you, your eye line isn't towards the actor because the camera is right in front of you that you have to look on the outside at the mat box. And yeah. it's so weird because you're looking at this like little box and you're trying to be super emotional and Lizzie, I'll never forget. She was like, she like stood so close to the camera, like literally behind the camera <laughs> operator, just, like breathing <laughs> on him and was like, I'm here for you. And, <laughs> you know, like I'll give you, and she gave me everything. Like I'll never forget on her take. Like she had, she had tears in her eyes on my side. It's like, she's not even on camera <laughs> and she's giving me the wow. world and she's like don't worry Christine like just look at the mat box and I'm here for you and I just remember being like wow this is why the acting is so good yeah. because everybody gives everything on every yeah. single take like no one phones it in at all moments right yeah, yeah. and they're they're actors that support each other you know so it's like yeah. just because you're done shooting your scene doesn't mean that you like step away and you kind of phone it in she's very much like whatever you need you need me to cry on the scene I'll cry for you you need me to like <laughs> literally stand on top of the camera I'll do that for you I'll stand on his shoulders <laughs> hey, stand on his shoulders I guarantee you she would do that because she's such an actor's actor but then she That's also amazing. respects the crew so much and like the crew does it in return Right. Like I, people always ask me like, what was it like shooting on The Handmaid's Tale? And I'm like, you know what the most, the craziest thing was, was that it was such a quiet set and that they respect the process so much. Like sometimes I couldn't even hear like the, the crew, like I couldn't even hear their footsteps. Yeah. And like, I couldn't even, sometimes I forget the camera was there. <laughs> and it's like, there's a hundred people there is like what it <laughs> yeah. is. So usually like you can tell that there's a hundred people there, but they kind right. of like disappear so that you can feel like you're really in the moment. And yeah, what a dream. I yeah. love this show so much. <laughs> the crew seems amazing too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So amazing. And they've been together, you know, for five seasons. For so long. Yeah. yeah. I want to know, Christine, what, um, I guess, what drew you to the Handmaid's Tale to begin with, like as a fan? And yeah. like, what's your favorite, I don't know, characters, storylines, anything? You know, I started watching it from season one and I had not read the book in school. So I didn't know anything about it. And so I went in completely, like I didn't understand the world and it just blew my mind, that pilot. I, I just, yeah. like yeah. the tone of the show is what I really gravitate towards. It's so realistic, but the world is so different. And so you have, like, I like the fact that you see the difference between her life in the U.S. and what that was like, and then boom, you're transported into Gilead, and you're like, "What in the hell yeah. is happening yeah. with these people in uniforms?" Mm -hmm. And they're all so evil, jarring, and you yeah, know, it's so <laughs> jarring, and you want to take them down, and you know, just this idea of fighting for what's right and and being trapped in this world, and like, how do you get back to your loved ones? Like, all of that is fascinating to me because I was actually adopted uh, in my family, so my my aunt adopted me. And I did not grow up with my birth parents. So my mm -hmm. birth parents lived in Taiwan. And then I grew up in Kennesaw, Georgia with my aunt and mm -hmm. uncle. So I always felt this longing of being with my parents. And right. even though like my aunt and uncle, like they were my adopted parents and I love right. them very Amazing. much. 
Yeah. It, there was just this yearning as a child to be like, I want to be with, you know, my parents, my mom and my dad. And like mm-hmm. this chase of getting back to them in a way like that I always had. Wow. So it just resonated with me. It was kind of like the opposite in Handmaid's Tale where like she's trying to get back to her child. And yeah. I always felt this need to like get back to my parents. Mm-hmm. And so it That's just so hit this like very personal note for me. Yeah. And as an actor, I think like this is the show that you want to be on because it's just so like intricately thought out and well done. And the complexity to every character is fascinating. Like no one's a good guy. No one's a bad guy. Everyone is everything. All shades of gray. All shades of gray. (laughs) And it's like even the guest stars that come on, like they have such a rich storyline and they fill a purpose. And there's, you know, like, Lily had so many things in her past that she like brings up through all of her conversations like Mm -hmm. that she was traded during the Waterford trade and that you know she almost made it on Angel's flight and that you know she was in Martha and she was part of Mady for so long so it's like this one guest star gave me this like whole world and that's yeah. thanks to Bruce Miller like I, I loved his episode because it just I wish I could have listened to Bruce's um episode before I started because I learned so much just when you guys talk to him about like well, how he creates his worlds and yeah you know how he leaves it like open-ended like right. when you're asking about Nick's mom it's like he's like well let's create like, I don't know. Like, yeah. let's, like why not and I think yeah. like as an actor that's your dream it's like a just a, a clean canvas for you to yeah. you have all this information but then you can also create at the same time so that's what drew me to the show and then you know to even have an opportunity to work on it was insane and if I'm talking if, if I'm picking like my favorite character Oh God, they're so good. But (laughs) Serena, I just, oh my gosh, Yvonne, just Yvonne's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. That, like that smirk she gave in this season uh, that was broadcasted on all the screens (laughs) in Toronto. I like, I think people say mic drop a lot, but that was was a mic drop. Mic drop. Like, (laughs) there's just not many moments as an actor where you, you can give one look. One look, no line, and it says yeah. Everything. Yeah, everything. And it's like between mm-hmm. Yvonne and Lizzie, you're just like, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, they're so amazing. They both deserve all the Emmys. They, yes. Yes, uh, they do. yeah, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with who who they are in person too. They're like so different in person. That's like true acting, you know. Like you're yeah. you're playing a completely yeah. different character. Yeah, incredible. We loved the uh, the scene with you and Samira in the cabin, and Eva, the director, said that there was actually a lot of that cut out, which we're bummed about. We would also like to see that. Yes. We're very greedy. Um, <laughs> Eva was such a wonderful director to work with because she like really is good about finding each person's process and really you know, honing like the scene towards helping whatever the actor wants in that. And so Mm -hmm. I just felt like she was someone who not only had a plan and really understood what was going on the episode, but very much like gave you leeway. And I think like, that's the dream director. It's like, let's you try a take and, you know, find your character and see what you like to do. And then she comes in and kind of gives you these alts and these ideas. And um, the scene in the cabin, was so cool to me because so that was a scene that was written in a previous draft of the episode that I didn't get I usually get the episode like when it's finished and done and ready to go and she was like you know there was a previous version where you and Samira are kind of talking about Detroit full (laughs) apologies to people from Detroit because I I felt so bad but it was like written in there so I just like I have to say it as the actor but uh, I'm sure I'm sure I would love Detroit when when I go and visit people talk a lot of shit about Philly and and it's okay with me yeah (laughs) look I'm from ATL so people people have their views on it but um it was just she was like there's I like this idea that there's levity between Lily and and Samir's character because it's and Moira because so much is going on with with um I'm like mixing up everybody's character names and their <laughs> real names 
Luke and June <laughs> because they're in no man's land and mm. like a bomb is about to go off and someone's <laughs> leg is about to be blown <laughs> off and so more Jaden I know Jaden's so cute um but this idea that like Lily and Moira are just sharing a bottle of whiskey yeah. and just <laughs> chatting yeah. you know it's just like such a cool difference and so I loved it. um Samira is lovely. I love her so much. Like we hung out a ton in Toronto. Like we just went to dinners. It was so great. And so when we did that scene, she was like, what if you guys just improv and like joked around? I remember Samira was juggling apples in the scene. We had some apples in this box. So many apples in this season. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was, was, she was just like, yeah. And and she's a great juggler. So of course she could do it. So she's juggling apples. (laughs) We're drinking, we're joking and we're laughing. Um, I don't even know that she says that she's from Detroit. So like, that's actually a real reaction when she goes, I'm from Detroit. And I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? Oh, that's awesome. That was me breaking character and being like, oh my God, like, I thought we were out of the scene. And I can't believe they kept that line in there. It's so good. It works. It's, yeah, it's, it's so I good. worked perfectly. Um, and we did, we did a lot of that. I think we did a good, you could probably cut like 15 minutes of us talking um, oh, wow. in that, and just like laughing. I think we were singing at one point. Um, <laughs> we were talking about movies. It was so fun. And I think like, that's what's so cool about the show is that I don't think of the show as an improv heavy show because everything is so well thought out, but that was like a baby glimpse into like letting us kind of play. Uh, And there were definitely, um, you know, more Lily and Moira scenes that uh, we didn't get to see in the final product, but that kind of just happens, you know, on dramas. It, It just, it's, there's so much good stuff. You know, the truth is like, there's so many good actors, there's so many good storylines. And I, I feel lucky that like, I I even got to be like a tiny snippet Mm. in this world, because the world is so rich. And I don't like envy the editor and Bruce, like, I don't even know how you cut all of this down to an episode, because they do, they shoot it so much more stuff. And it's, you know, but maybe they'll save that for later. You never know. Oh, we'd yes. love to see it. We loved Moira and Lily. Yeah. Got, yeah. The chemistry between them was so great. Yeah. It was just nice great. to watch. You know? yeah. yeah. There was, it, it was scripted that there was like a charged energy, but they, oh, you know, we don't know energy. what's going on. So just right. a charged energy. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Talking about improv, like I, you've, you've done a lot of comedy. Do you do you have a background in improv or in comedy? Not at all. I'm actually pretty shocked that <laughs> that I started in comedy. I always gravitated. Like I would say The Handmaid's Tale is like where my bread and butter. Like I gravitated towards drama. I gravitated towards like very naturalistic um, performances. And so when my first gig was like this sitcom for CBS called The Great Indoors, I was, did not believe I got the part (laughs) and very much was like, I don't think I'm funny, but I'll just say the lines (laughs) and you guys help me with this. So it's, it was really cool to jump from Dave, which is heavy improv, uh, very, very heavy improv to like Only Murders, which is very scripted comedy. It's like everybody says their line so that it hits a rhythm. And, you know, when you work with Steve Martin and Marty Short, like you you say the line, you don't veer off and you let them take charge. <laughs> <laughs> and then to then jump to uh, Handmaid's Tale, it was just like, the tone shift is weird. The time wild. is weird. And I do remember like on day one, I was like, okay, slow it down Christy like slow <laughs> it down like this like, and I like that I enjoyed this so much they're like take your time you want to pause pause you want to like stare off into the distance and not say a word <laughs> go for it Do like it. we love all of that and I'm like oh wow, that's awesome so yeah. cool yeah. yeah never felt rushed on on the show at all which is like I don't know how they do it because they shoot it in 20 degrees in Toronto. It's yeah. usually hailing, you know, like it was hailing. <laughs> it was hailing in the scene. Um, 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> usually. Um, when we shot the May Day scene, uh, when the Guardian comes and and Lily makes him say the code, you know, um, and she screams like there are crimson roses on the bench and he's yes. panicked and he doesn't say the code back. <laughs> it was 100% hailing on him. And I oh, just man. felt so bad because that was his first day. And I was oh. like, oh man, uh, how do you come in and you deliver this line with like all of us with guns on you? Right. Um, screaming in your face and he was such mm -hmm. a good actor yeah I'm very impressed with everybody <laughs> we really want to see more Mayday in season six we're yes for you Mayday oh that camp is so cool first of all it's so cool it's a like it looks like a real camp it's supposed exactly, to be like a repurposed yeah. summer camp yeah. um and <laughs> You know, when uh, Eva directed, it actually had, we had like this crazy torrential storm. So it was mm. really muddy and we had to oh. take gators into the camp. Like everybody had to ride <laughs> on these gators. It kind of oh, felt yeah. like Indiana, Indiana Jones. Oh, we loved seeing those videos. Yeah, we did yeah. see a couple, yeah. Behind the scenes videos. <laughs> it was really cool because you ha you'd have to like ride that gator for a while to even get to set. And so Lizzie <laughs> would play like Whitney Houston in the background and we'd just like <laughs> jam on this gator <laughs> into this like so super funny. muddy place. And you just felt so, like people were like tripping and falling uh, like in the mud and you couldn't imagine how they got like the camera gear into that place but no. um, oh yeah oh man and and the cabins were so interesting like if you walked in like every inch of that cabin was mayday like if if you like just walked over to a table it had like um files like files of people that they had rescued and saved wow, and like if you wow. opened the files and you read about them it was just that's, like oh wow so cool oh, so the detailed. props team so detailed if you go and you do like a like a watch back you you will see like every photo you'll actually see like previous like Martha's on there it's just like everything yeah. was very interesting so when you see um me showing uh Lizzie like all the people we didn't save yeah. it's mm -hmm. such a crazy moment because she's actually looking at people who are all gone yeah and it's like you see like children and families and uh, yeah it's so like it, this show really cares about every small detail like even when I'm off camera and I'm typing on a screen that screen has stuff about me <laughs> and you don't even see it um and I'm like great that's, wow, that's I'm so amazing. glad I have it as an actor to you know prep right. but yeah very amazing we just talked to Elizabeth Williams the production designer about that camp and the detail that goes into it is incredible I, I really want them to make like a I don't know, like, like an amusement park of Handmaid's Tale or something where oh, they just man. have all like the, an interactive sets and you walk through. Yeah, like a universal, <laughs> but like Handmaid's theme. Yes. Like, like a Mayday oh, camp. Mayday camp. Oh man, yeah. that like, it, it'll give you chills. Yeah, you could go camp there. Yeah, <laughs> you really could go camp there. Like you could stay out there. Um, and I mean, just also the women that were that surrounded the camp because mm -hmm. it was all the women of May Day and this idea that like men are not allowed. So, you know, when Luke goes, it's like he he stays in the car because he like doesn't know how to like get out. And at one point, <laughs> Lily's like, no, 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 like he can come like he's got to yeah. listen to this. But if you look at the wardrobe of all the women at May Day, uh, it's like uh, so uh, well thought out. It's like, yeah, um, I think I wore six or seven layers on that day as oh. a character like it wasn't to wow. make me warm it was like this character would have um it was just like she would have this like long sleeve with this flannel but it's like really worn down but then she'd also have a vest to protect her and then she'd <laughs> also have this like jean jacket I was just like okay yeah like let's go keep going, I, I keep going. and there was like a reason for everything and then I put a giant poncho over all of that. So <laughs> you, you like didn't get to see the layers, but you slowly see me like take them off and they all tell a story. And it was really interesting because originally Lily had a like a fresh scar on her face. That's how it yeah. was scripted mm. because uh, the eyes had captured her uh, and she was on her way to the colonies before the whole trade rescued her. Wow. And um, we were like, they, they were like, oh, like we still want the scar, but not necessarily on the face. So I actually had like a scar on my arm trailing down mm. that ultimately didn't get revealed, but I knew as a character. Character that you I have, have it, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's yeah. incredible. It's so detailed, everything. Yeah, so I never thought about like the details for you. Like that's yes. that's a whole other like layer of it is so that you can get into the character and be totally yes. immersed yourself in the character you're playing. That's really cool. That's why I think like there's there's so so much praise should be given to the crew because they do so much yeah. extra work, right? And there's like so many things that they've thought out and they yeah. and they don't think that it's a waste of time or they don't think that it's a waste yeah. of money. They're like right. this helps elevate the show and they'll give you everything for it you know and yeah. and you can you see it in the final product because you're like oh these actors are completely immersed in it um and my god these actors are good yes I always say like I've never worked with actors like this but this one was just you, you it's just like being on the Olympic team you know what I mean <laughs> like when you're playing a sport you're like okay I'm just gonna come in here and they're all gonna make me better and <laughs> I think there was even a moment where I kind of froze in um, Border because that was the first episode I shot. And I actually was just like how shocked at how good Lizzie was um, <laughs> on, on my coverage. Like I knew she was good. Don't get me right. wrong. And I always knew that she was just a phenomenal, like just could drop into a scene. But she really can talk to you about what you're eating for lunch and then call action and <laughs> boom in it. And I... yeah. Just remember looking into her eyes and she has these like beautiful blue eyes that you just like, they're like glass, like you get lost in them. <laughs> and at one point I just froze and I just like looked at her eyes and she was like looking, looking at me and she's like, yeah, <laughs> your turn to say the line. And I'm like, oh. and, and then I like got it. But um, you have moments like that. Seeing it in reality has to be, yeah, insane. Seeing it in reality is even more insane than when you see it uh, on screen. And usually right. it's not like that because when you see it on screen, they're so close to you. So you get to pick and it's lit so well that you yeah. get to see it in its exact form of what they wanted. But no, this will, I, I think for any actor, this is like a masterclass. If you get yeah. one day with any of these individuals, you'll be like, yeah. oh, oh man, I, I upgraded <laughs> and yeah. learned a lot. <laughs> I was... Um your time at TIFF because I um I was reading an article um about the outfit that you were wearing and obviously on your Instagram like your I love your style by the way I don't know if oh, it's like partly you. your stylist or you pick the outfits but seriously amazing um but I was reading that you really put serious thought into that outfit yeah I don't know if you can explain explain that a bit um for our listeners and also like do you do that with other event outfits or was it just special for handmaids that you did this I mean this one I felt so honored to be invited um I had this that was my first time at TIFF and also the first time seeing the show um which is so excited because it's exciting because you get to see it with a group of people and yeah. like when you get to see with all the fans you hear all the oohs and the ahs and the oh my god <laughs> so so exciting. Like, I saw, yeah like I saw that smirk uh, in person <laughs> and I was like oh like I couldn't even breathe um and all the credit to the styling goes to my stylist Rob Zangardi uh he is a king and just knows exactly like I, I I will always tell him my vision and he makes it come to life um I'm a I love fashion and so uh I tried to like put together a storyboard you don't have to you could show up in anything and they would <laughs> you know be honored to just like have people around but I very much like to tell a story and so for handmaids um I was like you know I think this is like for Lily it's it's this idea that she gets to celebrate that she's free and that she gets to help people. So I was like, I wanted it to feel both elegant and kind of in the world of Gilead, but kind of like a celebration. So he found this gorgeous Nicole and Felicia cape, like this like yeah, white cape. And, and then instead of making it like super formal, he had this like crop mini skirt underneath and and it had these gorgeous flowers on the end so I was like mm. oh this is so perfect in that it feels very Gilead but not in a dark way in this like very um like there's something about white and like feeling like pure and exciting yeah. and color added into it and then I slicked my hair back because I was like that's also very Gilead um <laughs> But maybe more like the wives, like not what I probably was doing when I was in Gilead. Um, 
but <laughs> it, it also was so fun because it was the first time I got to meet the other actors. Yeah, so yeah. I only got to meet uh, the actors in the Toronto world and I never right. got mm-hmm. to see uh, all the actors in Gilead. And so like meeting Ever and Steven and delightful. Max like was yeah. so delightful because I had been such fans and, you know, I'd, like really watched all the seasons to understand everything that was going on and then to actually talk to them in person. I just remember being shocked at all the accents that I, yes. like, yeah. I was like, yeah. you guys are, none of you guys. <laughs> Nobody's <are> American. <laughs> Nobody's American. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know that OT was an American because I had yeah. worked with OT. And oh, he, he stays on, in... He yeah. stays in his American accent um, because like I <laughs> see him at like 6 a.m. when we're in the makeup trailer and I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? Like, Good morning. How are you doing, Christine? And like we're hanging out in the tents in between that I never knew that he had a British accent. Shocked. That's like I was so like, funny. is he putting on a British accent? Right, right. right now? <laughs> like I was just like, what is going what on? What is real? <laughs> yeah, what is real? What is not? <laughs> and then at TIFF, like meeting Bruce, I had never yeah. had a conversation conversation with him you know I had done the season and um and just like never had any correspondence and to hear like his vision of Lily and what he wanted and then all the way to like the end of the season was so cool uh yeah so Tiff was such an exciting experience and I also got to wear like all Asian designers which like I was very excited about um from the jewelry to the clothing and um and my glam team like I just you know for me it's just really important to have that kind of representation all across Mm -hmm. the board like not just on in front of the camera so that was really exciting to kind of like highlight these designers and yeah, it felt it. I, it always feels good to be like dress up pretty and stuff. You're beautiful, <laughs> and we partied all night, <laughs> so uh, we had a good time that night. <laughs> we've heard, we've seen, we were so happy because we had there wasn't a whole lot in the off season, and then we we're just like showered with all these photos of everybody, and it was very exciting. Yeah, you guys pick great photos. I was like, we have to stop <laughs> tagging them, or they're gonna block us. <laughs> no way, I love them. I loved all of them. You guys like understand us so well outside of the show I think that's also so fascinating just like meeting the people outside of it I think we forget a lot that like these are real people People. and they live their own lives and they're very different from their characters um and that's like it's such a fun cast I think like that's what's so exciting it's such a heavy topic that everybody's doing and all the scenes are so heavy and then when you meet them you're like oh they could easily be in comedies like these people right. are well I mean incredibly trained but also just like who they are like I I give Bruce Miller a lot of credit like he really picked yeah. such nice um just thoughtful people human because beings yeah. yeah yeah human beings Amazing. and it's not always like that it's hard you know to have that on a set because there's a lot of different personalities and yeah (laughs) we are actors we have a lot of emotions um and it's I think like when you're a guest star coming in it's really hard because these people have been together for five years they know each other it's like a whole family it's kind of like you know when you're in high school and you're like trying to sit at the cool kids table you're just like oh god (laughs) like I'm going in for three days and I don't want they're not mean to me I hope they're not mean and usually they're not mean but it's just like they don't have to be overly nice and and they also don't have to give you a ton of attention because you know your job is really to come in serve the storyline do as best as you can and not be the center of attention you know like kind of like you are trying to make their storylines more interesting and like Mm -hmm. let the story flow and these people are people that like make you feel like you are the bell of the ball on your day Hmm. and it's so wonderful I it I really that was something I learned and I was like if I ever get a chance to be number one on the call sheet and I get to lead my own show I I want to be like Elizabeth Moss that woman really commands a room in a very thoughtful way she makes actors feel like not only respected but that like they're they bring value like it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter if you have one line if you have no line she's like she's like I've seen your audition I loved what you did in this take I Mm. you know I'm so grateful that you're here and like let's do this together and it's just like Mm -hmm. what like you've been shooting for 14 hours before like you're in all the scenes why are you even talking to me like you should just be (laughs) 
in your you know own trailer and stuff and she's not she's on set I feel like she never sleeps she's incredible I do too I'm like I don't know how you have the energy um but it's because she's there and so she you just like feel protected in in that way and you're like oh she's got me if I mess up if I panic which happens a lot you're really nervous to go on a big set like this she doesn't make you she doesn't embarrass you you know like she doesn't like say like ah you like missed your line like she'll go up to you and immediately be like oh like do you need you know like what can I do for you and she'll like even help you with the line she'll say like Hmm. oh does this feel more comfortable um would you like to say it like this like I feel like I could say it like this and so you're just like oh I say this a lot about this group of actors like they toss the ball back to you like you're not just tossing the ball to them and then they hold on to it and they run away with it. It's just like, they're constantly tossing it back and forth. And I think that's why like you, you see these scenes and they feel so real. Like it's like a real conversation. It's not your line, my line, your line, my line. And then we leave. And that is like a huge testament to why this show is successful and why people love working on it. Like you're just down to go back to Toronto because not only is the city great, but you're like, the process is good. It's it's very rare that the, both the process is good and the final like product products yeah it's usually one or the other to be honest you know and yeah uh ultimate like bucket list thing checked off for me what an experience wonderful experience well we hope you're you're going back so yeah you're going back (laughs) sending you back to toronto we we would (laughs) gladly watch a whole season of mayday so let's do it Say I, I will go back in a heartbeat, whatever they call me. I don't even need a lie. And I'm like, I will gladly just stand there and just be around <laughs> these people. Because you learn, you learn from every look, every, mm-hmm. you know, every way, even the way they walk. Um, it's like thought out. Like you, you don't think that it's thought out, but if you do a rewatch, you're like, oh my gosh, that's <laughs> why they like came out of the corner of that door because of a reason. <laughs> it's it's never like they just show up and they're like, all right, let's just hang yeah. out. It's always thought out um which is so cool really really cool but your performance was amazing too like Mm -hmm. I loved Lily so much so you absolutely belonged in that group absolutely thank you so much let me bring some of the others over because we are we're stealing all your time because we love talking to you yeah yeah can't wait to meet the others while you're bringing them over, I wanted to mention something very random that I saw on your IMDb. You you were in an LCD sound system holiday special. Is this yes, a thing? This is a thing. That's so cool. I love LCD sound system and I had no clue this existed. So it's like now on my holiday watch list. God, it's we <laughs> they decided to do like a music video sitcom. So it's it's like to their song and it's like they're performing on stage and then they go into a living room so it kind of feels like family matters or it kind of feels like full house (laughs) and you get to see the artists interact and it's like one um band member is a puppet and then like uh Macaulay Culkin's in it and I play Nancy yeah who's a keyboardist it's so (laughs) strange and weird and funny Eric Wareheim directed it so yeah if you want to see me in bang um that that is a very fun special definitely (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I don't think you'll understand the storyline at all but it's it's very Christmassy <laughs> awesome uh Yulia Hello. hi Christine thank you for your time hi. today of course yeah you already touched a little on um maybe script scenes or scenes that didn't make it in the cut were there others that have been in the script or already been filmed but didn't actually make it in the end there were small tidbits um I you know I I really respect Bruce and everyone that kind of makes the show and so you know I know that there's always a reason why it's not included and it's it's never it you know I think most people think like oh it probably didn't work or it was bad and a lot of it is like does it serve the storyline and what happens a lot with tv shows especially this one is that they're writing while we are shooting um and so there's it's both good and bad. It's great in that like they can change the storyline as it goes and they can like kind of see the edits of the like first two episodes and say, oh, we really like like what, you know, June and Serena are doing. And we want to we want to talk more about that. I mean, they do have like a 
a rough outline and they definitely have episodes done, but they have the leeway to change the scenes while we shoot. And so I think that's what's fascinating is that like when when I'm shooting episode five or six, it's like they're already watching the final cut of one and they're thinking about what they want to shoot in the finale. And so it's like, does this scene serve the storyline? And, you know, we've got uh, maybe two hours of good footage. What are we going to put in there? And I talk to creators a lot and they're like, oh man, it kind of feels like, you kind of feel like a killer, like a murderer. And you're just like <laughs> killing scenes, you know, scene after scene after scene. And they're all your babies, but you can't keep all of them because you'd have a two hour episode and it wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. So it was really fun to shoot these scenes. And I do, I did think that they were very good for the story, but maybe they weren't on the same track as mm -hmm. what ended up being the storyline. And so that just gives you an idea of like how many storylines are going at once time for the show yeah. wow. and like the web that they weave you know and like who gets to see each other but what's really cool about that is that they get to save it and if they yeah. think that it works then they bring it all back so um yeah. you know that's what's exciting about what's not shown but one day I'll be able to tell you uh, how about this I promise I will tell you when uh, they wrap wrap the series and we get to like openly talk about it. We accept. Oh, okay. We accept that deal. 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 Have it on tape now. Deal. 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 When I was looking at IMDb one day, I think it was, I can't remember when it was, maybe halfway through the season. Oh, this was very sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a really sad, sad story. It's a sad story. Um, we saw your name listed on episode 10 and we were like, oh my God, Lily comes back. And then we were like, oh man, like yeah. <laughs> it disappeared. Yeah, I mean, it totally is hard of being an actor. You know, yeah. you have to understand that like, you are there to they cast you and hire you for a reason and you do your job and ultimately like what makes the final cut is up to them. And you right. have to just say, you know, I trust the process and, and I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but I personally can take like a lot of the memories and keep them in my head and Aww. just know that like, I'm so glad you guys saw, you know, the stuff in three, because I think the, the stuff on yeah. in the episode border was like, so that those were my favorite ones, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I think like, you have to not be so married to like what you shoot, because right it just it's gonna happen. it will it's gonna happen and you have to understand that like that's life and and if people get to see it great if people don't not personal yeah. it's not personal it has nothing to do with the acting and right. um very much like how much it's changed is also it, it doesn't have to do with the character sometimes like mm -hmm. it's sometimes like oh we want to talk about this in the next season so we want to save yeah. it we hope so fingers crossed and we <laughs> I I can't speak for anyone but it's it's a lot of the times that happens and you're like yeah. oh I'm so glad like they brought me back or like you yeah. know but um, I'm actually really close friends with Kristen Gatowski and she oh, was a Martha. Yes, she was that. We actually oh. did uh, a series together. And so like, we always joke around about like, I'm like, maybe we do like a flashback scene together where yes. the two of us are Martha. Yeah. Like, yes, please. Oh my God. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes please. Like, it would be so cool. If, so you, if you don't get to do it, y'all can both come on here and just do yeah, the do scene. Yeah, do it on here. And we'll yeah. record it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god, I gotta text her. I'm gonna text her like immediately after this. I'm like, you know what? Above the garage suggested we should do that. Violet is a great editor, she can pull it up. Yeah, right. she, can, she can make it happen. Um, but yeah, that's that's the cool part of it is that like even if you do die on the show, you can always come back in flashback. So yes. yeah, yeah, we saw that this year. Very fun. Thank you for that. Marigold. Hi, Christine. Thanks for being here. Hi. Um, so my question is kind of twofold. Um, so do you think that the women in the Mayday camp are able to find healing? And if so, how does it um, differ from like June or Moira's healing process? I think it was really interesting when they told me about the character of Lily, because it was this woman who, you know, Yes, she's physically and emotionally depleted, but they also mentioned that she found a lot of joy 
in helping the resistance. And so it was this fine line to play this character that had gone through so much trauma and like really was on her way to the colonies to die and then had a second chance at life. And now she's free. And instead of living in the free world and doing her thing she decides to be at May Day and and help the process and still be a part of it and so I definitely think that you know there's a part of Lily that she can't let go because it's it's like so much happened in Gilead and she also has so many people that are still in Gilead that she hasn't been able to get out And so there's this idea where it's like, we still have to help all the people that are there. And what's the only way to do it without like going back in is to help this whole resistance and bring supplies in and help with the communication. I think like that was fascinating for me that they wrote so much about being able to communicate with certain commanders and like certain people, like they had Mm -hmm. like this whole like underground railroad, right? Mm -hmm. This whole network um, to get information across. And I think for Lily, there's, there really is this like, just this faith that they can get people out and that this is doable, which is why everybody's like, no, this is a, like, you're just going in and this is like suicide if you go back in, where she's like, no, I have people that can go back and forth between no man's land. I have people that can help get you there. And if you want to go in, I support you. You know, right. there's um, a scene that we did. Uh, it's, I think it's in five and fairy tale um that eva directed and you know we're talking about how we've lost communication and that it's it like we've we can't get a hold of our guardian and when june decides that or um when luke decides that he wants to go in she's like okay let me help you and and there was a part of the scene where Moira is like, no, you guys shouldn't do this. Yeah. Like why are you <laughs> going back in? Like this is a this what are you doing? This is a suicide mission. There's a part of Lily that's like, if we can help one person, we're going to do it. Like, this is this is worth it. Um, And so I definitely feel like there's a part of her that just can't let go, but is also not going in for revenge. Like, she's going to kill everyone, you know, like, she's very much like the in between of like, I'm going to make this happen. If she does become that enraged, uh, it would be very fun for me to play. Um, I would love to do it. Um, But very much a liaison and is like, okay, you tell me what you need and I'll get that for you, which is nice to be that person. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, because Moira, Moira, before we meet you, calls you like crazy suicidal. I can't remember, but it's just so interesting because then when you actually see the whole camp and how they work and how actually they're very organized and yeah. intelligent about what they're doing. I just, I really liked that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's definitely like when the, the women are are putting arsenic in the, <laughs> um, in the yeah. clothing and stuff, it's like very strategic in that yeah. they're like, yes, they're assisting in it, but they're also like, okay, we have to keep this going. Like May Day right. can't disappear. Right. And, and I think like what was, what was also like a really great line that the writers wrote was like when um when Lizzie comes in and she's like this is May Day and Lily's like no like May Day's everywhere yeah like we're all you know and you can we don't you know have uniforms and you can't tell who's May Day like we blend Mm. in with the world and we're just all around so I think what's really cool about the writing is that then you can have May Day pop up anywhere like not just in Toronto you know and not Mm -hmm. just on the border yeah maybe Hawaii you never know oh, like you're just maybe. like <laughs> you think that train's making it to Hawaii Christine <laughs> you know there are certain trains that can go in underwater so um <laughs> in the world I I don't uh yeah I believe in all things handmade all things so are I possible. trust them to make all things are possible <laughs> we look forward to finding out same same um ginger Hi, Christine. It's so nice to meet you. Hi. Um, so my question is, um, so I, I really loved the bonding between June and Lily. It just felt like they were kindred spirits. And it was so great yeah. to see June meet somebody who like understands her and sees her. So I was wondering um, if you are able to return next season, what would you like to see for Lily's storyline? Oh, um, okay. Well, this will all be wish fulfillment. Um, but I, I think it would be, fascinating to see Lily 
decide to go or help June like physically, not just through communication. Um, I think there is a desire for Lily to do more. And, and all she wants to do is kind of like, I, I think in the in her perfect world, Gilead would not exist, right? And the whole thing would come, come down. And so this idea of like Lily and Moira teaming up together and then going in to like help June, because it's it's like June has been doing it kind of on her own. And, um, and now that she's separated from Luke, it's like, oh my God, like she's going back in and, and does she, where's her, like, where's her resistance? Like she, her, where's her army, you know? And it's like this whole May Day camp is her full army. I mean, these women are very capable. I've seen them hold the guns. Like they know what they're doing. <laughs> um, and so, gosh, how satisfying would it be if like she had this like just team of women just go in and take the whole thing down. But yeah. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> well, we would love to see that too. <laughs> you know, this is a this is a show where you feel very satisfied after the episodes, which is I love that. You know, like a lot of shows, kind of like I don't know what happens, and the show is like, no, we're we're killing them off and we're <laughs> making it happen. So um, I I think my God, the last season, I think we're just gonna expect some crazy scenes. Yeah. I yeah. you just know it's coming. You know, like you just, you you know. That they're writing it uh, and Lizzie goes for it too like she gets so excited about these like crazy scenes she's like oh my god we're shooting this thing together like we're blowing this guy up it's like, this is so cool you know um so you know she's like advocating for these like really awesome things right uh, which yes. is really awesome really cool yeah uh Scarlett go ahead hi Christine thanks for talking to us today hi um, you pretty much answered all of the questions that I had. So I had just a small, tiny one <laughs> about um, you asked Liz uh, June, you say to her that you thought she'd be taller. And we kind of yeah. saw that in um, season four. Was that supposed to be a callback yeah. to that? Yeah, definitely. And when I uh, when I had auditioned for it, I personally had taken a baby break from watching it. So I didn't see season, like I, I knew what happened, but I didn't see all of season four, season three and season four. And so when I got the audition, I did like a quick rewatch of like a bunch of them <laughs> and I saw the callback of it. And actually they mentioned that she, like everybody says, oh, I thought you'd be taller, like sprinkled throughout the seasons. Um, so it's definitely a callback. And it's this idea that this like woman that was an editor for, you know, uh, like that was her previous job. And then that she, like Lizzie is smaller. I'm 5'4". Um, I think we're like pretty close in height. And this is just like, she's like so capable, right? Like you, like she commands a room. And it's so interesting because Yvonne is so tall. And so like <laughs> just the, the difference between the two and how they're both so commanding, but the height difference is like fascinating how they play off of that. Um, so I like that there's just like this like little <laughs> sweet to me woman is um, mm -hmm. doing so much wreaking so much havoc and uh, <laughs> is willing to like go in and you know chop off some heads and like bite this guy's face <laughs> oh, it's cool <laughs> I yeah. like that there's it was cool. <laughs> yeah it's super cool and I like that like we feel satisfied as women you're like yes. yeah like he deserved that go for it so that was a really cool callback that was amazing the season four finale season four finale oh so good so good yeah. very satisfying awesome thank you thank you Raquel Raquel's the last one so we almost made it to an hour we're, we're closer than you <laughs> oh all good hi Raquel hi Christine thank you for joining us today um my question is about May Day because it's one of my favorite parts of the hunting um universe yeah Obviously, it's a very important part in the novels, but even though you said um, earlier that there's a lot of thought that's been put into it, we, the viewers, don't actually get to see that. Um, and we, I personally was a little bit disappointed with the amount of uh, Lily um, media that we actually got in the show this season. Um, so hopefully we'll see a lot more next season, as you've been talking about. <laughs> it's very important in the Canadian, um, sorry, the Canadian media is very important in the Testaments. Um, so do you see Lily maybe 13 years down the line being part of the spin-off as well would you would you like that uh i personally as an actor would love it i would work with mm -hmm. these people in a heartbeat uh like i mentioned earlier because it's just you know i think 
I honestly, um, as an Asian American actor, I don't get the opportunity to play these women. And I don't have that kind of complexity, you know, and just this idea that they, you know, she's not a lead character. And so she can come in and kind of help tell the storyline, but have this such have such a rich world. Like you get to you get to understand the trauma that Lily's been through, but that where she wants to go. And so I would love to. I mean, this is like a dream role to play. And at the same time, I think there's so much more to be seen with Lily. And I like that they kept it open ended. And I and I think also it's just like we've been talking about May Day since season one. May Day yes. is yes. like the, the thread, you know what I right. mean? And so mm -hmm. that's why it's so satisfying when June finally sees mm -hmm. May Day. It's like yeah. she's been yeah. working with this group for so long. They've saved her. They've helped kind of like, you know, like when she was trying to escape with her baby, like right. they helped usher her along and it's all been like secret. So to see a place was just like, what? Wow. Yeah. And then to see faces with that place. Mm -hmm. I think that's why the, the fans and the viewers were so excited and, and mm -hmm. felt so satisfied, at least for me, because I was also a fan. And this idea that they like still have connections, you know, it's especially in Canada. So it's like the main thing is that like, not only do they have connections in Gilead, but they can get people back to Canada. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they touched on, which was like, Canada and Gilead are starting to work together and that it's not this like US yeah. and Canada kind of link anymore right. and so I'm very curious to see like how the Canadians handle their relationship with the US and you you see all these protests you see like you know when um June gets shot like it, you see like there's a lot of riff and tension and I'm wondering in the future does it get patched up does it get worse? You right. know, like what does May Day do to kind of figure that out? And like, because in Canada, they can freely roam. Like they're they're pretty much out in the open. And then in Gilead, they're like, they're hidden. And so right. it's like, then do they also go into hiding and disappear? I don't know. Mm. Fascinating. Great to find out. Yeah, I, I would love to find out um, and <laughs> see. But it feels good to be part of the resistance. I will say that. Like yes. as a fighter and as yeah. someone, you know, I just feel like women innately, like we go back to when they say like women always say that when they've done something extraordinary. It's like all, all of the women at May Day have done something extraordinary. They like, they've like given up their lives to like help other women right. and just just this idea that you're like no I'm not gonna sit back like I'm just not gonna sit back and let you guys right. torture us like we're gonna fight and we're gonna yeah it feels so real sometimes when you talk about it yeah. um and then in this show you get to like fulfill that uh Absolutely. which is why it's so exciting lovely thank you so much thank you so much you talked a bit about Christine about um being an Asian American woman and you know these roles are so I guess you don't get offered the much yeah um do you think in Hollywood things are changing for the better do you see any progress yeah absolutely I mean I just think with this role alone you know there's progress and I I this is what I love about The Handmaid's Tale it's like they don't make it about that right like they don't just like shoehorn in characters and they're like oh we're just doing it to because we're doing it it's like there's very much a reason I love that Lily was specifically written Asian they mm -hmm. had thought about it the writers wanted her to be an Asian woman and 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 to me it's like okay you see this world you see that she's like it's not this I don't know I think a lot of shows say to themselves what well, has to look this way and that's why we have to keep it going and The Handmaid's Tale is very different from that it's like they're open to so many possibilities and even though it's a very strict world I don't think you see it from like a casting diverse perspective as a very strict world and I appreciate that you see all different ethnicities and all different roles and like power mm -hmm. roles right and so I I just really love that you know, you don't get to see a lot of Asian women in this show. Um, so that felt very uh, exciting for me. And I felt really honored. And I do think that now is a lot better than it was 10 years ago. Like, I definitely mm -hmm. think 10 years ago when I was auditioning, you know, I was auditioning for roles where I just like walk behind and, you know, kind of pepper the scene. And now you would never think that I would get to do a role where it's like, oh, my God, 
she's helping run May Day and that there is a potential, you know, I wouldn't say relationship, but there is communication between her and Moira. Like Mm -hmm. that is so exciting. And I think that is like really important for people to see uh, because this is a made up world. And so why would you give yourself these kind of restrictions when you have the chance to open it up to so many different actors like that mm-hmm. like you have that gift to give to people why not yeah. and I I definitely know like Bruce and Lizzie like made a conscious effort to to cast like in this way and I I'm very grateful for that because not all shows are like that you know and uh yeah it's like Handmaids is the most progressive and also like reminds you of like all the past at the same time. So it messes with your head and uh, it's (laughs) so good. That's why we're all like obsessed with it. (laughs) Well, I'm glad because we definitely need to see um, more diversity. Uh, What was I watching? Uh, Oh God, the movie always makes me a tongue twister. Is it everywhere all at once oh, ev- yeah everything, everything everywhere, everywhere all at once yeah everything. oh yes. yeah god that movie it's so good it's so <laughs> yeah. so good I hope Michelle Yeoh wins an Oscar for that um yes. it's just like yeah it's just like like things that are interesting that like you don't expect I think that's why the show is so good it's like you both like you want things to happen because you're so invested in the storyline but then like it always turns and you're like what oh my god I can't believe they did that um and so that's why I'm always like you just have to like keep an open mind to see like what characters you'll see because they will come in and out and they will write like these really rich storylines and and you'll be very satisfied so I very much look forward to season six and I hope I get to talk to you guys again. Um, and Plus we'll follow your other projects. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Dave season three comes out next year. And so if you want something very different from The Handmaid's Tale, you can watch Dave. We need that. <laughs> yes. We're yeah. definitely, we're, we're looking for off season content right yeah. now to kind of like, yeah. just to keep ourselves entertained for the, <laughs> the yeah. long yeah. way yes. for season six. Off season. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't want to talk about fertility, you can watch a show <laughs> about um, a, a Jewish hip hop rapper um, yeah. and, and his creative director, <laughs> me. <laughs> Awesome. Are you filming that at the moment? Yes, we're filming that right now. Um, cool. And we're almost done. But uh, this season's super exciting because Dave goes on tour. And so you'll oh. see a lot of fun artists that we interact with. Oh, um, cool. And my my character, Emma, uh, fulfills like a dream of hers that she's had for years. So oh. I'm excited oh, for the exciting. fans to see that. Yeah. yeah. Very fun. And do you have every anything on the horizon that you can tell us about? I have one secret thing. I hope it Mm. comes to fruition. Um, But yeah, I'm kind of like a free bird. And so what's fun about stuff like Handmaids is that when they call, I can go at any time. And, um, you know, my characters on all these shows that I dabble in exist and and so you know as long as they they send me an email and say that uh they're down to have me back I'm I'm down to go if you see me on a flight it's always a good sign (laughs) well you're always traveling too like I'm very jealous of all your travel destinations Oh, thank you. It's the only way to keep myself sane from the other craziness that goes on. But yeah, I I love just like traveling as much as I can. And, you know, in between, in between jobs, it's it's one of those things where we're usually unemployed. Um, and so when you're unemployed, you try to like keep yourself sane and find inspiration. And, and then yeah, when they call you get your butt on a plane to Toronto, and you're <laughs> like, you're like, I'm ready. I'm ready to be freezing with all these people. Let's go. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Oh, yeah. Before Christine yeah. goes, we need to ask Christine about her dog. Oh, oh my yeah. God. How did we not? You have the cutest dog ever. Yeah. Sally Bear. Oh, you can probably my Gmail. But... Oh, she's <laughs> oh, beautiful. Sally yes. Bear. Oh, my gosh. She is a chow. Pomeranian husky. I have so a husky. She's wow, a, that's a nice mix. Myth. Yeah, she has like all the traits of a husky, um, but she has a palm tail. Um, <laughs> she has like, a big fluffy tail. Yeah, and then she has a purple tongue, so she's yes. so she's pro chow. So my German, yeah. I had a German Shepherd mix until last year. He was 14 and a half. Awesome. But he had a purple, mm-hmm. he had like a chow tail and a purple tongue. <laughs> and I got his DNA test because I was like, it has to be chow. And it yeah. was like 
it made no sense. It was like Bernie's your own dog <laughs> and King Charles Spaniel. I don't know. It was, it was completely, <laughs> complete nonsense. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I did the thing for her and it's a German shepherd. And I was like, what? Where's the Pomeranian? And the old, <laughs> it's such stuff. a scam. Like, I don't know if this is real. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, Callie Bear is my baby. And um, when she gets, she's, I, uh, when she gets fluffed up, she's getting groomed later. She's Callie Berry. So, you know, <laughs> she goes in and out between her star status, but she's very, very fun and I wish I could bring her um to set yeah. she would love Toronto oh my gosh she yeah. loves the snow um but she is a yeah. she's named Callie because she's a California dog and <laughs> she's probably really hot right now because it's 75 degrees and <laughs> yeah she's my little baby so oh, I see that you rescued her right yeah yeah, yeah I did I rescued her off of Craigslist. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the right way to rescue a dog, but- um, Any way to rescue. Yeah. I, yeah. When she was a puppy, seriously, she was five pounds. Um, and I oh. guess her owner at the time wasn't able to pay for her pet fees because um, she had a belly full of worms. And so oh. she was put on Craigslist Allie. and they were like anybody who could pay her vet bills and um, wants this dog. And I swear, I thought she was going to be 10 pounds. Cause she was this big and I was yeah, like, okay, yeah. like I'll, I'll have like a little she won't be big. Set dog. I'll bring her to, uh, to the trailers and stuff. No, she is gigantic. She's 60 pounds now. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> she really grew. Uh, but she's so cute. She thinks she's five pounds. Yeah, so, they all do uh, that. They jump on you and feel yeah. super fluffy. Yeah. Here's my king. Oh my gosh. Look at those golden. <laughs> They're so cute. I love that they both smiled for you too like that's such You're a good adorable. picture this is like one of the only photos that like usually um this is my older girl she's 11 and she like in photos oh. like she'll just like look like she's miserable and then after I've taken like 50 yes. photos like she'll start then smiling she'll like, give me one yeah <laughs> yeah I like to take photos of Callie after hikes because she's like panting so she's oh, smiling yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Like she's <laughs> yeah yeah looks like that's she's good... smiling but she's actually yeah. miserable because she's panting but <laughs> she hates it's like they know that there's a camera on them yeah, and I'm like seriously I'm like Callie Bear you're an actor's dog like you gotta like you know you gotta smile for the camera you gotta know your light like you you gotta like ham it up a bit right? yeah <laughs> But yeah, my my dream is to have a dog that I can bring uh, on set with me and travel because they're just so, they just make everything good yeah, and calm they and they are emotional <laughs> support animals. Um, and I, yeah. I want that. That is my dream. So hopefully Callie Bear gets a fun little sibling at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll put that out there. The next time I talk to you guys, which will happen, Ooh, I will have yes. like a little set dog. dog. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we'll have the set dog. <laughs> Thank you for asking that, Kimberly. I can't. I would have been really sad if we had not asked about your dog. I know. That was, so was like, on that was like my first my first question was like, ask about the dog. That's yeah. usually our first fifteen minutes. It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. talk about dogs all day. Yeah. Ask about all the dogs. Okay, for real. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. No, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love how in detail you guys are and how how much you guys like pay attention. It's so fun. It really did help me. Oh, honestly. that's so good Like, to if hear. any actors are now auditioning for the show, listen to this podcast because you're gonna <laughs> learn so much. Like all the details, you would mm. all the behind the scenes. Oh. Fascinating. Oh. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys thank so you. much. This is so fun. Thank you for giving us so much time as well. Oh, yes. anytime. Yes, yes. Anytime. This is great. We'll see you next year, if not before. All right? yes, yes. yes. If not before, yes. I'll be listening to you guys on my Spotify. So awesome. All right. Bye. 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 I saw in your stories um you were doing some cooking. Was it yesterday? Yes. Yes. I decided to be really extravagant and treat myself to some um whole foods caviar uh oh. and I just made some you know this is what you do you get two dollar pasta and then you add very expensive caviar to it <laughs> <laughs> and then you make a fancy little sunday meal for yourself and and that is what i did and it's awesome it's I one of the that. easiest things to make <laughs> but yeah that's how i treat myself i make very lavish meals that's amazing <laughs>